Good morning, I'm Sam, and this is a bit of an unexpected one. I, the camera is sitting on a car that turned up last night after a phone call. I think the phone call was about 11 o'clock, and then by 12.30 or something, this car was sitting on my drive, and I'll show you, show you what we've got. So, we have a GR Yaris. And the reason I have a GR Yaris, which is, for those that have not come across it before, a 260, 270 horsepower, four wheel drive, kind of rally homologated road car, um, very cool little thing. Toyota have invited me to go to Le Mans. So I'm gonna get in the car and I'm, I'm running a bit behind. I have stuffed some things in the boot. I kind of wanted it so that I can shut it and you not see the things when we stopped up, but I'm gonna get in the car, go meet the crew at the Channel Tunnel, and go watch some race cars. I'm gonna to drive to the Channel Tunnel. I'm gonna do your classic Le Mans road trip. I'm gonna meet some of the other, the other people, and we're gonna drive, drive down through France, then have a weekend of a bit of racing, one of my friends is also down there who's been racing in an LMP3 car before the race. And I'm just gonna have a bit of fun really, but I'm gonna bring you guys along and try and show you some of the stuff. If it's interesting or not, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find out. Motorsport content doesn't tend to do that well, but what I will also do, because I'm gonna be spending eight, whatever it is, 14 hours driving a GR Yaris, I'll give you my sort of we could probably do it be a 1500 mile or 1200 mile review of a GR Yaris. Uh, I've not driven one of these in a while. This is a circuit pack car, so it has the uh, sporty differentials and stuff that you can switch between sport, track, and normal down there. Immediately got in and I was like, oh, my seat was a little bit high. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this. And then realized that the person before me had actually just cranked their seat all the way up. It does feel slightly higher up, but that's all right. I think it's okay. Let's get on the road. I haven't really got much to say. It's quite early in the morning. See you in a bit. I've been in the car on the road for about an hour, and let's give you a little insight of what it's like on the motorway. It's actually super chilled. Like I've got adaptive cruise control. Off I go. The only thing that might be not particularly great is road noise. There's a reasonable amount of road noise, so it probably get to you after a really long drive. Now, when we're in France, the roads are better, so it might be a bit quieter and actually not too loud. But yeah, onwards to the tunnel. Okay, we've arrived at the Flexi Push Lounge, and there are a bunch of Toyotas. The it was absolute carnage back over there. Gonna go grab some freebies, go to the toilet, and get going. Now, I would not normally find this particularly interesting, but we stopped at a petrol station and there's four cars and we're all paying on one card. And for some reason, this shell in France requires you to prepay. They don't trust you not to run off. But you can only put your card in, fill up one car, and then you put your card in and you get the receipt. So we have to wait for each car to fill up before we can all fill up. Bit of a silly situation, but uh, one of the joys apparently of traveling with four cars all being paid for by the lovely Toyota. But yeah, random little thing that's just happened. Let's give you a little bit of a sort of mid-France update. European roads, bit smoother, road noise, not quite so bad. So like, definitely noticeably better than in the UK. Um, but yeah, it kind of just sort of munching up the miles. I've done sort of cruising at normal, normal auto route speed, and I'm doing 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, I can't actually tell you what that is, but in, I think a similar, in the UK, I was doing about 36 and a half, 37 MPG, mooching along, which, which is all right. Uh, this car of our group has the least range. It's about 300 miles, but got a, a bit of a mix. But uh, yeah, so onward. So, been driving the GR for a while, and, and <laughs> come across, 
good little road in the middle of nowhere in France. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's so fun driving a small car on small roads. I'm so used to like bigger cars, everything's massive now, that actually like something little, three pedals, point and squirt is great. And we we decided at the last like big petrol station stop, um, we only needed one really, to go the non-toll route. And it's added, it's probably added an hour to our journey. But it's been so nice just going past like really nice fields and through little towns and we stopped and had a coffee and um, and now we seem to be I think I'm on wiggles all the way to Le Mans so it's time to sort of put a foot down and um, have a bit of fun <laughs> Oof. well we've arrived in the car park in the middle of Le Mans um, Really good drive, it took about an hour longer than we probably needed to, but pretty much didn't, stayed off the toll roads for three hours maybe. Um, really fun, really fun. Saw some completely like deserted French villages and stuff, but parked up now and uh, I've just got, I've got five minutes to get to the hotel, which is seven minutes away for the transfer for dinner. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Join me here at the driver's parade, which have a little look around. We wander over here. We've got some Ferrari press cars that have turned up. 296 GTB. I'm not sure about these smile graphics, but quite cool looking. And then an SF90. I feel like I'd be interested to know what owners think about the two cars or people considering buying one of them because you get a lot in that in the 296 that you sort of got when the SF90 came out granted it's still a V8 and that's a V6 but 296 to me sounds significantly more practical and as fast but what would it sound like? I don't know cool things Good morning, welcome to the, I've uh, oh, got the wrong lounge behind, but our lounge is there in a minute. The reason I've got my hat back all the time, I don't even normally wear this, is let's say if I would have it this way around, but whenever I try and put the camera up to my eye, it smacks into the, the top, so I have to have it this way around for a bit if I'm taking photos and then also someone to take the sunglasses off. But we've got the grid walk coming up soon, and I'll see you then, we're gonna have a look around some cars. Okay, we've made it to the grid. You see behind me. Here. I'm going to have a little walk through some of the cars. Not going to say very much, but you know, lots of fast racing cars. The bread walk is going on at the moment, and it's just a sea of people and cars. The two Toyota cars at the very front of the grid, and it's it's a pretty awful place to take photos and you can't really get anything that's too many people but just sort of soaking in the, the ambience behind me and then uh, I'm gonna be up to pit up to the I'm gonna go up to the grandstands and I'll watch the start of the race.
quick start this morning. Um, a lot later than I wanted, but just timings last night. We didn't have time during, I just didn't have enough time during the day to get stuff done. So I ended up going to bed and getting back to the track, getting back from the track at about two. And I wanted to do an early start and could do the 5 a.m. sort of thing, but it would have meant having two hours sleep and then driving back to England off the back of that. So a bit more sleep, it's eight o'clock, 8.30, and I'm off to the track. Parked up in the car park this morning. Pretty near the track, you can hear the cars still going around. I think Toyota are still smashing it ahead. I think one of the cars has possibly had an issue. They need to sort of bring it into the pits. Effectively, I think, with the hybrid system, do a turn it off and turn it on again, and then back out again. Um, so one is now, I think, a lap behind. That was the case when I left the hotel. Well, let's go have a little look. Let's go have a little look around and try and find some cool things to see. Picked a bit of uh, refreshments. Yeah. What do you got? The car's going to the Dunlop Bridge. Having a pretty nice time, enjoying some sunshine and watching some cars go around. Now one of the cool things about these sorts of events is things in the car park. I've not done an extensive look around all of the car parks, but I've seen a few things. There's a nice Ford G T behind me. I've seen a couple of nice Porsches. I'm going to keep looking, but heading to my car, some nice little bits of eye candy on the way. Just chucked all my stuff in the car, had a nice little one through the car park, seen a few things. I do like the uh, the reflectors in some of the windows with eyes on that. Other than that, looks quite cool. Loading up the Yaris and uh, going to try and bust out of here and, and mission it home. So this won't be a bit short. This bit, just in the car, to enjoy a bit of the Yaris, but mainly a motorway drive and a channel tunnel and then uh, and then a rest up. But a pretty awesome weekend here and uh, time time to just do some driving. I'm in the car on the way back. It's actually really quite chilled. I've got adaptive cruise control, lane assist, so it's, you know, I don't necessarily I've got to have my hands on the wheel, but I don't have to be fully, 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 fully focused the entire time. You can sort of just relax a little bit and sort of watch ahead. But it's really cool, nice listening to Radio Le Mans. The race is on for another three and a half hours. Uh, Toyota's doing well. Uh, there was an incident, I feel, for the uh, Corvette team in GTE Pro. The Corvette was catching up with the leading Porsche and uh, basically got an incident with an LMP2 car coming past and got put into the wall and is out of the race. That was really unfortunate for them. Um, I don't think anyone was particularly massively, you know, at fault. P2 car probably could have done a little bit better, but these things happen. This is racing, that, that is Le Mans. But I've, I've had a wicked time back there. And now I'm just on the road, motoring back. I think it's gonna be about three hours or so, three and a half hours to the Channel Tunnel, and then another hour and a half for me to be back home. And at least in this direction, you get the plus one hour in terms of time when you get home. You obviously don't gain an hour, but you get back a little bit earlier than you might have otherwise, which is, which is nice. So I'm just gonna put my head down and motor along. Right, we're kind of rolling back into London. I'm getting towards the end of this journey. It's been about seven, seven and a half hours, something like that. And uh, wrap up thoughts. One, Le Mans, great event. Um, sort of flew by quite quickly. So much, we had a sort of quite busy schedule, of, like lots of things you want to see and do, and had a great time with Toyota. Um, and, and met a lot of the team and you know, some of the people behind the scenes and stuff on, on the racing front. And it, it feels like a team that's got a really nice ethos and a sort of like kind of family vibe. The, the drivers all talk to each other and get on and stuff like that and the two cars and everything. 
in terms of the, of the Yaris, it's been fun. It's 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 not the, the car I would pick for a really long journey, but actually, you're in Europe, the roads aren't that much smoother, and therefore a lot of the things that make long journeys in the UK, so just like tire noise and exterior noise, a bit draining, don't really apply so much to these the cars when you're driving in them in Europe. And this has adaptive cruise control. It also has the lane holding assist, so. And it's a great, sort of rolled up the miles. Not, not much of an issue there. One thing I do not miss is coming back to London and driving through half of London to get home. And it is awful. Just stop, start traffic, lights, junctions, everything for an hour plus to get home which car it's good fun it's I, my sort of feelings of it before are it's got so much grip so you can kind of just push it hard when you want to drive fast and it feels quite safe so I, I don't know I'd like to have a go on track and sort of really bung it about and see how it is and see how it moves about in the different different modes but it feels quite stuck to the ground um, with a little bit of sort of understeer. It's a cool thing. It's awesome they've made. And someone pointed out that Toyota is, I think it's the only manufacturer at the moment that makes three separate sports cars with a manual gearbox. Next car I'm gonna try and, uh, try and have a go in is, is a GR, GR86. I'm gonna mooch through for another, God knows how long, through town and, uh, and and then I'll finally, finally be home and wrap this up. And there we go, back home. Ends my time with the Yaris GR and a weekend at Le Mans. Lots of fun. Um, it's a great little package. It's, you know, it's, it's not perfect at everything. It's definitely to try and get all the performance and the fun stuff at the price. It's not going to have your Porsche interior and your Porsche feeling gear shift and stuff like that. But I think as a package, it's a great thing and it's kind of cool. So I'll see you guys in the next video.